by the Arcade Saga. Today I thought st uh, it was really time to uh, do a repot on this, uh, these guys. Uh, if I don't uh, forget, I will have a link pop up by now where you can see the, where I did buy them. Did the unboxing. This is the Miltonia Flave Scent and it's beautifully uh, mounted with quite a lot of roots. I've been soaking this in this uh, water solution, it's RO water, <laughs> I'm sorry, with uh, seaweed for about uh, three hours and I've been using this for a few days as you can see you see some residue on the sides so that's uh, why it's there but uh, I've been soaking this again we have some beautiful uh, nice green root tips still there so I think it's a beautiful time to do a repot on this I just thought I saw a bush snail but it wasn't uh, luckily it was something else or at least something else. Um, but yeah, this <laughs> needs to come off. Um, let me have a think. I think I will get rid of the water. Let's put the arc here. Let's. It's behind me, the sink, so I will uh, empty this bucket. And I have. This probably makes some some noise, but I have my wireless mic on, so I can do this now. Uh, and you will be will be able still to hear me. But I'm back, um, so I, uh, yeah, <laughs> where to start? I did cut the wire already, it's wired on that mount, but it's with this green stuff. And yeah, I'm probably not be able to save these roots, a lot of them, but like I said, we have some new growing tips there. I have a knife, like Nina does with Ninja Orchids, <laughs> but this is, uh, I never had one this extremely attached to a mount that I needed to take off. So yeah, probably gonna damage some roots, like I said. But I try my best, I will try my best. To save as much roots as uh, we can. So this is going to take me a while, so I'm going to speed up it from now and we will have a look at it. Um, when I'm finished, but like I said, this will uh, probably take me some time, so therefore, I, uh, like I said, I'm going to speed it up. So, I probably didn't need that much speeding up because this came loose fairly nicely and let me show it in the set of camera here are a bunch of new roots that I was after I hope you can see them here with a lot of green root tips and that was one of the most important parts for me because those are the newest roots and we have a few more here on the sides they are still intact so probably we can save them so now let's do the rest of the orchid. At least let's try and do that. Yeah, this is really. Uh, this part is very stuck to the mount still, so I try to uh, unmount it again. Uh, loosen up the roots, still unmounting it, of course. <laughs> With this many roots, but I, yeah, I wanted to have it in cell watering. I must admit, the Miltonias do take some time. For me, those are the hardest to get started in, uh, in cell watering. You, you might think the Miltoniopsis, but no Miltonias. For me, yeah, the Miltonias are a little bit harder. They will do it eventually, but I try to resist <laughs> most of the times for a while. But they do not have a choice. I don't want them on mounts or in organic media. So therefore, and eventually they will uh, 
they will go. So we uh, start growing the roots in cell watering. So here we have the mount, it's almost, yes, there we go. And there we have it. Look at the roots. So many roots. <laughs> it's beautiful. It really is beautiful. But yeah, it was kind of kind of hard, but I did expect it to be a little bit harder to get it off. I still see quite some uh, green root tips, luckily. Let me try to show it to you guys. There we are. As you can see, we have a fairly nice root system with still some green tips here and there. Quite, quite well, I see quite a lot of them. But yeah, now it needs to go into a pot. But these roots seem to be fine. Let me check a few. Yeah, they, these are beautiful roots. So let's try to save them. I don't know if they will, but we shall see. We have some new ones still there, so maybe it will start to branch out. But this is it. I'm going to pause it now, the video, and I will back, uh, come back with my stuff uh, ready for uh, this arbor to put it in self-watering. So let's uh, give this a rinse of hydrogen peroxide, just in case I didn't see any pests. You can never know, and I think it helps all. So with the uh, broken roots, stop getting a rot in there. I'm not sure about it, but I think it, it helps to so get it a bit cleaner. And while this is sitting, I'm going to talk about the setup. <laughs> um, but first, I want to have a look, a look here. A little bit sad. It's a new road, but let's get the sheet off. Yeah, it's rotted. Yeah, it's a bit sad. Well, actually, it's still firm. Still firm, but it looks a little bit brown. So, who knows, who knows. I will uh, let it dry up. Let's have a quick look here. I like to get the sheets off a little bit. You never know what's hiding there. So let's get this a little bit of hydrogen on that new growth. So if there is some rot, probably, hopefully I can stop it now. But that's um, about your artillery. Let, let me clean this up a little bit. I did use some uh, solution, some water with some uh, bleach. There it is. To clean up the table. I have this now around in a, just in a simple spray bottle. Some bleach with some water so I can clean the table in between the uh, repottings, etc. It's a bit easier. And I like to mix it up a little bit. I have my alcohol here for my tools, but I will clean the, the table up with my uh, bleach solution. So, okay, the architect is sitting there. I'm going to let it uh, do the uh, hydrogen peroxide to its work. Now we are getting into something. <laughs> First of all, this is the uh, drip plate, I think they you call, uh, call them. You usually use them underneath a uh, pot so it can catch the water and can dump it out. I'll use this as a self watering setup and I did come up with a sort of lid from I think Tupperware box or something container something like that and what I did uh, was I burned some holes in the bottom and this one could fit in here and I can uh, have it uh, filled up with water so I don't need a water meter because I can eyeball it I can see if it's dry or not and uh, because this is quite quite big now, if you compare it to a pot, do I have a little pot here? And now I'm a regularly sized pot. Yes, I have. Give me a second. This is, I think, the 15 centimeters pot. 17. This is even the 17. So you can see, this is a very large pot. Why would I uh, want a set like this? Well, first of all, this. Arcade, as we saw, has quite a root system, so I can uh, um, put it in there. But also, these guys, these Miltonians, like to make quite a large rhizome before they start a new growth yet. So they will fill up a pot quite quickly. So therefore, I thought, well, I'm going to try this and give it as much room uh, right from the start as, as I can. 
so hopefully I don't have to repot it. Um, need to repot re it every single year. That's the plan. So I'm going to fill it up with the first layer of uh, pumice. I'm going to use for the bottom layer the bigger stones, and for the part around the roots and the upper section of the pot. I will use the small pumice because it's a small arc, rooted orchid. I always like to look at the roots. The bigger the roots, the bigger the stones that I use. That's a general rule of thumb that I like to uh, apply. So, here we go. I'm sorry for the noise. This new pot fill <laughs> does need quite some uh, filling up because it's so big, but if it works, then it's uh, well worth the try. And I try to fill it up, as I usually do. So if I have a reservoir that the roots will not uh, are uh, sent in that water, the roots that are now on the orchid, if it wants to have water roots, so to speak, it will uh, let those roots grow inside the water. Uh, but it can decide uh, for itself. But to prevent it from rotting, I will first uh, fill it up with a layer of pumice. Like I said. Before I even think about putting the, uh, the orchid in, in, the, in the pot. But I think this is about enough. Let me grab... Um, yeah. Because I need so much, let me put the container with the uh, small pumice uh, next to the pot, so it's a little bit easier to get to it. Here we have it. And now uh, let's try to position this orchid. <laughs> with you see, it's a climber. If we can hold it like this, I try to uh, lay it down, and hopefully it will uh, start to straighten up. Those new roads. We'll try to put it something like this. Yeah, so we have some room on the sides here because I think this one may want to make a new growth as well. We have a new growth here in front, and that new growth that I was spraying just earlier is here, there. So we have one on that side as well. So if these newer bulbs are approximately sort of in the middle of the pot so I can see what they want to do the new roots we have here so uh, yeah let's start filling this up I'm right-handed so I need to change the angle a little bit I'm sorry you guys like this like I said I'm right-handed I hope you can see it I can adjust the camera a little bit whoops let me with one hand something like that there we are so you can see it a little bit better, I hope. Let me put this to the side. Yeah, this will work as well. So, try to hold the arc with one hand, and now we're going to fill up the pot. And I will try to be as gentle around those new roots if I can. So, I hope I don't damage the root tips. And as you can see, I bury the roots as good as I can. And hopefully they will like it. But it probably needs some adjustment <laughs> of used to getting used to. Let me put it like that. No, I want it a little bit, I want a bit more pumice. To grab hold of before I let it go. Maybe something like this. Yeah, that's probably okay. I can have I could use a little bit more pumice in the front of the pot. Something like that. So I now buried most of those new roots. Try to do it as gently as I could. Let's 
move it up a little bit. More. And there we go. Let's have a good look. It's now easy to adjust things if we need to. We don't want to keep repotting this, obviously. So Try to do it as much as you can now. Uh, no. I'm just going to leave it like this. I hope that the new growth will now grow up right. So we have a few almost laying bulbs, but that's that is what it is. Because it's a bit of a climber. So um but that's okay. Now I'm going to fill it up with some uh, with a layer of pebbles to prevent the uh, it from uh, the top dry layer. Let me grab those sheets because those will start to rot. I'm pretty sure they will. So I'm going to pull them off like this. These guys, these will probably start to rot when they, I'm pretty sure they will. Because it's dead material and, uh, well, as we all know, if you have dead material and you keep it wet, that's asking for rot. So, we need to get them off. Sorry for the noise. Pebbles always make even a little bit more more uh, noise. <laughs> and a few there that I put in with my hand there in the middle, so it has something to get hold of. And a sheet there. Throw it away quickly and could use it. Some pebbles there and a few in there between the bulbs and this is pretty much it. Okay, let's have a last, I'm sorry, let's have a last look together. Let me quickly make some room to do that. And uh, I'm always making a mess. So there you go. I will adjust the camera now a little bit, so I don't want to make you seasick, and I will try to zoom in a little bit. Whoops, that was zooming out. So we can have a better look. So here is where I did put the last pebbles in the last section of the repotting. I put them uh, behind and in between, no, not behind, but in between the uh, bulbs. We have some roots, some live roots there. Oh, this leaf is in the way. <laughs> Maybe you can see a little bit of white dots there. So I can keep an eye on those. I hope that I didn't break them. But this is how it looks. I really, really enjoy the look of the pebbles. This is quite heavy now. But um, yeah, this is the biggest pot that I could find or that I could make. But, uh, oops, I'm sorry. But yeah, this should, uh, should work, I think. Let's get a bit of that. Um, yeah. So let's give this a name tag. I have my tags here. It had a name tag, but I probably did throw it away. Did I? Let me check. Oh, it's still there, but it's not not very nice. So with that hook on. So I'm going to re-write it. Let's give it a date of the repotting today. Well, uh, yeah, when I'm repotting this, when I'm filming this, it's the 26th of uh, September. So, Miltonia Flavescence, if I pronounce it correctly. Flavescence. 
it. And let's hope this is the right one. I bought this one because I thought I already had one, but then it started to bloom and it turned out it was the Royalty, Moriliano Royalty. And I had three of those and I just recently did give one away. So I now have still have two uh, royalties. But pro hopefully I will have a flesh scent and a proper, a, a right flesh scent now as well. So this is the easy tag that I will give it. The date is obviously for the repotting and I uh, know when it uh, did get into a self-watering setup. So this is the first one and uh, let's grab the Cattleya now. So, and here is that Cattleya I was talking about. It's the Cattleya Preparata Striata, as you can see. And I'm going to use the same basket as I did for the Miltonia, but I will not put it in. I just hold it above it so I can uh, dump my uh, residue there. <laughs> and, uh, well, yeah, let's have a look. We have some new roots there that did dry off. But we have one, two, three new grown tips already there in a the pot. So that's very nice. I'm very happy with it. I had no idea. I just I was like, well, I'm going to do this before winter starts kicking, <laughs> and I think it's growing. Working on a new root, uh, new growth, and making some new roots. And we have even more here. So yeah, we should be fine. But I need to get the mud off very gently. So this is beautiful, of course, because these roots can adjust into the new setup. And that's what we like, of course. But like I said, I had no idea, but I think you will get a general idea when, when, you, st when you get more experience growing orchids. Um, that's not always, you, you, that not, doesn't mean that you're always right, but I, uh, I had a feeling that this could be uh, the time for a repot for this one. But I must admit, I didn't know that it had so many new growing roots, obviously, because it was in a black pot. So yeah, that's beautiful, I think. And sometimes you're just wrong, and you already have it out of the pot. And you can try to put it back in, or you can take your chances. And that's what I uh, normally do, especially in spring and summer. Because at, in those seasons, for me, it's easier to get them to start making room, uh, new roots again. So I don't mind if I... Uh, I have a video on how I uh, uh, let my... Uh, plants get used to the new setup, the new cell water. Those plants didn't all have new roots when I started, so it's, if you are interested in that, just uh, look those videos up. And I just took a new root off, or a root growing tip. So, it's very easy done, so even though I try to be as careful as I can, Sometimes you need to pull a little bit to get the moss out, but yeah, you can pull those growing tips off so easily. Like I said, I try to avoid it as much as I can, obviously, because I can use every root on this. It's a very fairly young orchid, as you can see, it has only three bulbs, but it's, it does look healthy to me. Nice, healthy orchid. That's a dead root. Let's grab the scissors so I can make a little bit more room to get the uh, moss off. Like that. And we have some more dead roots. So, probably I, by taking those off, I might create some a little bit more room. Like I said, to get the moss off. Um, let's look at this side. These are firm still. This colored, a bit brownish, but still firm, so that's not always. Brown roots are not always dead, so. As we. Well, at least as I learned the hard way, <laughs> they can branch. So that would, that would, uh, would be nice if they would do that in their new setup. And they might, because this one is really making new roots. Trying to make the best out of it, I think. <laughs> um, and this one is really attached to this piece of moss, but there it was. So 
sometimes you just need a different angle. If you pull on the mask and it feels very stuck, you may turn the arc around, try it from a different side, and that sometimes is enough, like in this case. It did come off very easily, pulling it up the other side. This one is dead. yes. So I can go. Yes, is this one. So it can go. Firm, firm, firm. Maybe yeah, this is not the best example. You can see this one. Uh, this one is coming from this new root tip there. It's coming from this root. So. Always be careful what you do cut off, and that one, that wood wasn't as brown, but still. Um, you never know. This, this is not, this isn't that root. How do I get it out? Oh, it's, it wasn't completely that part of the root. That can happen as well. Parts of the root are dead, so I cut off the dead parts. If I have a breaking point, I will cut into the breaking point. If not, I try to cut as close to the live tissue, but I don't cut into the live tissue. I leave a little bit of dead tissue of that dead part of the root, and that's it. I will spray it with hydrogen. And so far, I don't think it gives me gave me any trouble, but I don't like making extra wounds, if you know what I mean. So if I cut in a, in a healthy root, I create a wound, which is a potential for rot to start uh, getting into the root system. Like here, we have a breaking point, but I don't know if it wants to show up at the point of my scissors. Let's, I have my scissors just, you can see it now, I think, I hope, but I will cut it there in that breaking point, and there is the root that part is going off, did go off. Let me check those in the middle. This one is feeling hollow and it is... where are you? Oh, it's this one. If I'm correct, it's this one. Yes. There it goes. This is also a dead root. There you go. And I think we almost are there. Oops. Let's have a final look. So far, so good. I think we have pretty, uh, pretty, uh, pretty much new. Uh, quite, a, quite some few new growing uh, root tips at. Uh, uh, here <laughs> do I need to go? There. So yeah, let's spray this with the hydrogen peroxide. We never know, and like I said, I may seal the wounds. I hope it does, or clean the wounds. Before we put it in a pot. And I have my sterilized tray here. Alcohol, it's the other colored bottle. Spray some alcohol on this on my tools. Put this aside. And now I need to have a think about the pot. While the arcade is while the hydrogen is working on the roots for the arcade, I uh, I have now a bit of time for uh, a new setup. Let me see what I have. I'm not going to grab a very large pot. I think this will do. This is the 12 centimeters, if I'm correct. Or is it even? Yes, 12 centimeters pot. So let's grab a plastic inner pot. Do I have. This one here, yes, I have. There's one. Let's put it back. Here we are, this one. 
will fit in, but it's kind of low. So it's now easy to get out, but once the arcade is in it, it's not that easy anymore. So therefore, I need to adjust that. I will grab a cable tie. I have them here. Of course I have the black ones. I always have black. <laughs> that's what I look uh, like. Look like, no, that's what I like. And we have here a hole maker. I Honestly, I have no idea how to call this in English, but I, I think you uh, will recognize it now. So what I do, I place it to the side of the pot, I squeeze it and I turn it around, squeeze it, squeeze it. This should be enough. Yes, it is. And now we have a, a little hole there, as you can see. There it is. That's what I wanted. Let's get rid of this thing again, because we don't need it. I will put that cable tie through that hole and close it up like this. I have some fingers in there so I don't pull it right back to the pot, but just like this. So I make a sort of loop attached to the pot. And now I can get rid of the excess of the um, cable tie. So let's cut it off. I have my tools here in a drawer, so therefore I keep going for a back and forth. <laughs> but here we have it. Now we made a, a loop and now it's, for me, way easier if it's filled up with the arcade and the media. I can just pull it a little bit and then grab it with my other hand as well. So I don't have to shake it. That's basically what I uh, try to find because of all these new root tips, you don't want to shake it too much, you don't want too much movement in the pot, so therefore I like to get it out as easily as I can. And I found this to be very handy. If you like, you could put another one here and can, can uh, pull on both of those loops. I do that with very heavy pots, but these guys are not that heavy, so I, I only need one and then I can to pull it up a little bit and then I can grab it with my other hand. So that's that. Okay, the water meter, as I call them, this will give me the indication of how much water is still left in the reservoir. Let's unwrap this. So we'll put it in, in the pot like this. And when it's, once it is in the pot, it will, uh, like I said, give me an indication of the level of water. But what I, what I do these days is I get this cap off because these red things, the indicators, like I uh, call them, they will go up when the water is, uh, is uh, in your reservoir. If you water your orchid, it will go slowly up like this. But they do get stuck quite easily. So therefore I get those caps off. I don't use them anymore. I throw them away. But what happens sometimes is that it's like something like this, stuck like this. So you may think my orchid still has some water. But basically it doesn't have any water anymore, but this is stuck. So therefore I like to tap it while I have a look at my arcades, while I'm watering. I tap those red things and then if it goes down like this, I know the water is uh, gone. If it bounces back, so it will do something, uh, if you tap it, it will go like this and go straight back up. You know, you have water in your reservoir. It sounds so easy, but I have some situations that where I uh, thought my orchids uh, did have water and they didn't. So therefore I point this out on a sort of regular basis, I try at least, just to uh, make sure you have your water in a pot. And don't be uh, fooled by this tool. It can, uh, it can, it's very helpful, but it can also uh, be a little bit annoying sometimes. Let's start putting out this tablet. I may have ended up putting this uh, video in two parts because I already know that this is going to be a very long one. So um, if you hear back again for part two, probably started a little bit earlier than, uh, than, than now, but I uh, thank you for that. I'm not always know how long things uh, will take, but we always can make a part one and part two, I think. So. That's what I did with this one. And I slowly let it fall into the pot because I don't want to break those root tips very easily. Like 
this. Grabbing some more. Shake it a little bit. Should be able to stand on its own now. No, it doesn't. Yes, yes. A little bit more media in there. Just to be on the safe side, these water meters are also handy. You can tie your arcade uh, towards it. Did I say that correctly? Not completely, I think. <laughs> but what I basically try to say is you can use this as a stake for your arcade. So let me demonstrate it. Because this is a little bit wobbly, it has enough roots, but I, once again, I don't want to break those root tips. So therefore, I uh, use this wire and I attach the arcade to the water meter, like a, uh, a stake would do. But it saves me a little bit room in the pot. I don't need another stake. This this water meter can uh, do the job uh, that job as well. So uh, therefore, I like to use them for different things, and they are there already. So why not use them? The excess wire can go. A little bit too much, and this is it. This is it. This is more more stable. I need a uh, top layer of pebbles to finish this up. So let me grab them. And of course the tag. And then we will have a final look at both of the artists in the in the drawing room in the greenhouse, because these both of them like fairly high lights. So I have them not here in the in the arcade room, but in the greenhouse, and they can handle and they probably like more uh, higher temperatures than uh, the ones are growing in the arcade room. The arcade room are the uh, Miltonia Miltoniopsis and the uh, Odontoglossop types, for example. So I will give this a quick rinse, and then we will uh, we will have a. Uh, look at the uh, arcade in the greenhouse. Well, actually, we're gonna have a look. I don't think I need to show you how I rinsed this. I did it before. Um, so let's have a look at the uh, at the greenhouse and see, uh, have a final look at them. So, and here is uh, sitting my Flavsend arcade, as you can see. I think it's a uh, very interesting setup. <laughs> but I think, uh, yeah, it may probably have some years for some new growths here and it's uh, next to my other Miltonias they really like it here as far as I can tell but this is uh, the Flavesend and it receives quite some light here in a greenhouse normally it's a bit of a dull day today and there is a little bit of empty room on the shelf because we have one here that is making very long spikes so therefore I have it sit on the, on the floor let me turn off the Ventilator for a second here, and here we have the Cattleya peperata variety striata with a new tag, and this is the uh, the orchid. And you can see the new roots there. Hopefully they will start to branch, but as we saw, we have quite some new root tips starting in the pot, and it's now sitting here. It's not getting the most light as these Cattleyas do. But that is because I just uh, obviously did a, did a repot on it, so it's stressed now. I don't want to overstress it with uh, with too much uh, light. So that's uh, that's why it's uh, positioned here. Uh, the same goes for the flavescent. It's over there. Um, I keep an eye on it. Normally with Methonius, it's okay to give them a little bit of extra light. I don't think I'm going to change the place the, uh, for this one, but I might. In the near future, put it more over here, but I think it uh, will uh, receive uh, enough light there as well. But I keep an eye on it. If it's going to stress too much, I probably gave it uh, a little bit too much light for now. But I think we are okay. But that's uh, just to uh, to keep an uh, an eye on. So yeah, this is it for now. Um, like I said, yeah, it's probably uh, a, a bit 
get a fairly long video or two parts i'm not sure at this moment because i did do this in sections but uh, at least uh, i just want to say a thank you for watching and as usually if you have any questions please uh, leave them in the comment section and i will get to them uh, as quickly as, uh, as i can and for now i just hope to see you at one of my next uh, videos bye bye